In this video, we'll go over the JavaScript enabled IoT technologies that we'll be looking at in this course. They're definitely not the only JavaScript enabled technologies out there, but they're what I hope are a good range of devices to show the potential that JavaScript and the Internet of Things can bring. We'll start with Arduino. Arduino boards are simple microcontroller boards that use an open source physical computing platform and development environment to sense and control electronics. They're very well known and are a big standard when it comes to microcontrollers, with many Arduino compatible boards out there ensuring they work with the Arduino standard. You can see more info on Arduinos at their website over at arduino.cc. From a JavaScript perspective, it's great as there are various APIs that allow JavaScript to control and receive input from Arduinos. The main three I've seen around are Node Serial Port, Johnny5, and Cylon. I'll explain these more in our Arduino lessons. There's a rather big and exciting Nodebot community around the world who build JavaScript-powered Arduino robots. If you're keen to get involved in that, visit nodebots.io or search around the web to find a local meetup group near you. One particular type of Arduino I've given its own lessons is the Arduino Yon. The reason for this is that it's a pretty exciting version of the Arduino which also has its own built-in Linux server, which means you can run a web server on it, and in particular, you can run Node. This means you can run JavaScript on your Arduino and have most of the JavaScript communications all in the one device. I thought this just had to be included in the course as it's pretty exciting and there are a few differences in working with the Yon and its node server compared to regular Arduino projects. SmartCore is my favorite board of all the boards in this course. It's a microcontroller like the Arduino, but has its own cloud service that enables Spark devices to communicate over the web in only a few minutes. It's unbelievably easy to set up and it's been the most reliable device I've used so far. They've even got a new version of their Spark Core called the Photon, which I have already pre-ordered. It's quite likely to be shipping by the time you watch this video. The Spark Photon is a smaller and faster module that is the successor to the Spark Core. I cannot wait to see the new possibilities that this will bring. There's plenty of info on the Spark OS and Spark devices at spark.io if you'd like to learn more. From a JavaScript perspective, they've got a Node API, which is really clean and easy to use. So you can access Spark devices that are online simply with a few Node commands. Thus, why it's in our course. The Tessel is also a microcontroller like the Arduino. However, it has one pretty big distinction that is especially relevant in this course. It runs JavaScript on the board itself. It's compatible with Node and has Wi-Fi built in so you can communicate with it over a local network. You can find out more about it at tessel.io. Whilst I found it can be a little buggy still as it's a relatively new product, they've got a bunch of developers working on increasing cross compatibility with various JavaScript modules and the potential for Tessel to make some really big waves is pretty big. Whereas the Arduino Yon was exciting because you can have a Linux install and thus a web server running, the Tessel can be a web server and a microcontroller too, all on one board that runs JavaScript. Onyx is a really neat service that surprisingly originated at Microsoft that provides the ability to run JavaScript rules to automate actions on Android devices. You can turn on your phone's flashlight or its Bluetooth connectivity. There's a good level of potential here and it's very cool that it all works via JavaScript scripting. You can find out more at onyx.ms. It's similar to IFTTT, or if this, then that, for those who've used that service. However, it has a unique JavaScript and Android focus, which is why I've chosen it for this course. WIT is an incredible voice recognition cloud service that supports a ton of different platforms, including JavaScript and Node. It's free to use and very simple to get started and add voice recognition to your projects. There's no way I could create an Internet of Things JavaScript course without including WIT. It is just that good. You can find out more at wit.ai. I'm apparently not the only one to see potential in WIT though. Very recently, it was announced that they were bought by Facebook. Luckily, it seems they do intend to keep the service free and open for developers, so hopefully this only brings more resources and potential. The Leap Motion is a small bit of tech that allows you to control applications and devices via hand gestures. It can track both of your hands and all 10 of your fingers, allowing you to control devices without touching a button. It has a really well thought out and recently enhanced JavaScript API that can even track individual bones in your finger. It's also progressing to be able to be used with virtual reality so that your hands and fingers can be brought into the virtual world. All of this is available using the JavaScript API, which is super cool. You can find out more at leapmotion.com. The Maya armband is another gesture-based device controller that is a bit newer than the Leap Motion and uses electrical activity in your muscles to control applications and devices via hand gestures. It's still early days, but the tech is growing and applications for it are too. There's a JavaScript plugin that I've used in the course to connect with the API, which I'm not entirely sure is officially supported by the Mayo team. However, it works very, very well. To find out more about the Mayo armband, visit www.thalmic.com. Last, but without question, definitely not least, is the Pebble smartwatch. 
I'm a big Pebble Watch fan and absolutely love mine. It connects to both iPhones and Android devices via Bluetooth and enables notifications, fitness tracking, music control, has a weak battery life, and can do a lot more. It uses an e-paper display, which makes it easy to read in both daylight and at night too. It has its own ever-growing app store, and most importantly, has a JavaScript framework that can support native Pebble apps to give them access to pull in data from web APIs. It also has a framework called Pebble JS, which is in beta that allows you to create full Pebble apps in JavaScript too. In this course, I'll be focusing on the first framework as the Pebble JS beta is still relatively recent and in development. If you'd like to find out more about the Pebble, head to getpebble.com. That concludes our video overview on the IoT technologies in this course. Hopefully there are a bunch of technologies you're interested in in here that will be able to guide you through and begin your journey into the JavaScript enabled world of the Internet of Things.